touch somebody on both sides of you and tell them God has been good to me. Oh, come on, tell them on both sides if you know it and believe it. Oh, come on, tell them God has been good to me. Thank you, Jesus. And honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy toward us and his grace. We thank him for all that he has done. Honor the Lord for Pastor Gray and his wife. Come on, put your hands together again for them. Amen. We thank the Lord. We honor the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord that they have opened up their doors to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You can get your Bibles. We have a lot to accomplish if the Ushers can turn the air down a little bit. <clears throat> I'm struggling a little bit in my voice today. and been trying to fight something, and I don't want the enemy to <clears throat> put me in a position where I'm having to en embrace a stupid cold after getting all these shots to go to Africa and all these diseases, then I get a stupid cold before I get ready to go to Africa. <laughs> so what's wrong? She's sick. She got a cold. <clears throat> but I honor the Lord for your prayers. Megafest was a blessing. We honor God. Oh, how many people went? There's been some people that are here that went. It was a blessing. I, was y'all praying for me? Amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He's good all the time, and, and all the time he is good. Before we, if you can turn with me to the book of Ephesians 3 and 10, and I'm having some feedback. Can y'all please get this right? I have feedback every week, and this ain't no major auditorium to produce sound in. It's this, this is a small building, so... After about eight or nine weeks, we ought to have it unless we don't know what we're doing. Amen, somebody. So, yeah, I'm, I'm having some kind of feedback going here, some kind of uh, interference. Yeah, whatever that is. We have been studying about um, the principalities and the powers. How many people in here can honestly say that since we've begun this teaching, uh, you have seen results in 
your prayer. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask one more time because maybe you didn't hear me. So how many people in here have seen results in your prayer lives since you have embraced the principles and the strategies that God has laid out for us? Because the Bible said that we are not destroyed for any other purpose but the lack of knowledge. We're destroyed because we don't have the knowledge as to how we are to operate in the spirit realm. We don't have the knowledge as to how we are to uh, make a stand against the enemy and to stand in God. Having, all, having done all to stand, we stand. And so I believe, and this is my own, my own interpretation of that scripture. Some people may disagree, but I believe we... We, we stand in two postures when we stand. We stand in the spirit, we stand in who we are, and we stand against the enemy. So having done all to stand against the enemy, we stand in the power of God. Well, it makes sense to me. You got another definition, I'll take it. But that would make sense. It, you know, when you're having moments of insanity, it works. You know, I don't know if you've ever been to that point where, you, where you're going through so bad, you got moments of insanity, and, and, and what you may hear may sound stupid to you, but it comforts you at the time. <laughs> How many people can witness that? You moving in things of the enemy and you undergoing attacks and all of a sudden you just hear your spirit said, just lay down and rest. And then you may say that to your friend and say, well, the Holy Ghost told me to lay down and rest. Well, that sounds stupid. All that, it seemed like God would have gave you, and well, it works for me right now. <laughs> right now, that lay down and rest has helped me. So having done all to stand, stand helps me. Helps me to understand that I'm standing against the enemy, but I'm able to keep standing because I'm standing in God. So in the scripture, Ephesians 3 and 10, if you would go there for me, Ephesians 3 and 10, I want us to, I want us to, are y'all pursuing this prayer? I'm, I'm, you know, I, I got to ask y'all a few questions when, this is, when, when I get through teaching. We're going to have a little talk. Ephesians 3, because I'm working on something. You know what I'm saying? This, 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 this is real serious to me. You know, you, you ain't hopping no two planes and all of that every week trying to, I mean, I couldn't hardly do uh, Megafest last week. For, I mean, it, people took me to the hospital and the, and the ambulance and, and I'm, everybody in the hospital is running and ripping, you know, because when people know who you are, the whole hospital was just doctors coming from everywhere and people trying. And I'm laying up there talking about, I got to get to the prayer. I got to get to the prayer. You know, my husband looking at me like, you is out your mind. You, do you know you sick? <laughs> so I have to talk to y'all because this thing is in my spirit. You, you know, this ain't this just something that I'm just... No. I mean, this thing is down in me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the hospital and I'm sick and I'm just like, I, I just, I just got to go to the prayer. My husband's like, but you ain't going. I'm like, but I got to go. You, you don't understand. I got to go, you know, because I feel like we are working on something in the spirit and we are a team in the spirit. And I believe that the enemy don't like what we're doing. And he doesn't like that we have joined covenant together. And believe me when I tell you, believe me when I'm telling you, I'm trying to quit this prayer. I, it's hard getting on the plane every week, but the Holy Ghost just won't let me right now. I got to. I got to go to London and, 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 and got to go to Africa and from Africa to London. And, 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 and you know, I'm, 
I just, I just don't want this to fall, y'all. Because this is, you know, this is an agreement here. Now, now if y'all don't want the prayer, just, just tell me today. And then we'll love you and kiss you, and then we go on. But see, I don't want no drop in my prayer when I'm not here. Because this ain't no isolated thing. We're working on something. We're trying to reach a goal together. So I don't want you to become despondent and discouraged and all of that when you don't see me. Because you got to understand that the prayer is not just about me. Do you know what covenant is? Let me tell you what covenant is. Covenant with the Lord. The reason why the Lord cut covenant and not friendship with us and not brotherly kindness is because covenant means I will if you won't. Friendship means I will if you will. You buy me a dress, I buy you a dress. You treat me to lunch, I treat you to lunch. Covenant says I'll buy you a dress, I treat you to lunch even if you don't never do it for me. And so when we enter into a covenant relationship to break something open in the heavenlies and to do something that has never been done in the realm of the spirit, then both of us have to make up in our minds that I will if you won't. So that means if, if, if something happens that prophet is buying them cannot be here, then you will. Because there will be days that I will be here and you would miss, which means I will. So touch somebody and say, we got to hold down the fort. We got to hold down this prayer. We got to hold it down. We can't, we can't let it drop. And I go to Africa and I'm, I'm going to be gone for those two weeks and I come back and they tell me that y'all didn't come back to the prayer. Then we going to make our final announcement. We, we going to part. We going to, I'm going to quit you. We going to break up. Don't nobody want to be in no one-sided relationship. You know, I'm here right now. My husband ain't here, but what, 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 what would that feel like if he, if he knew I was over here at 5 o'clock in the morning cheating on him? Don't nobody want to stay with you and you cheat. <laughs> I got to be able to trust you when I ain't with you. <laughs> you know, you have to bring that thing down to relationships because that's all people understand. All they understand is love. Then they start going, oh, okay, I get that. I get that right there. All right, all right. <laughs> you said cheating and people go oh, okay I, I get it can't be cheating you gotta hold your end of the bargain I gotta still be a wife if I don't see my husband for three weeks I still gotta stay covenant with him I still gotta he still gotta be able to trust me he gotta be able to know that I'm where I say I am how you think it'd be if I told him I was in Kansas City at the prayer and I was somewhere else with some man Oh, I'm at the pray every, because when I get on that plane, I got to know that you here. I got to know that I got somebody backing me up, somebody that is praying for me, somebody that is calling my name. Okay, we got the relationship right. Every now and then, you got to have a talk with your mates. Say, so where we at? Every Tuesday is our anniversary. We celebrate anniversaries together. Amen. Amen. If we're going to part and break up, we're going to break up as friends. Everybody's going to leave mad. You don't know where I am. And you say, well, what happened to Promise Mama? She just didn't show up no more. She just stopped coming. No, I'm going to quit you. I'm going to quit you loud and clear. I'm going to say, it's over, y'all. I love you. Y'all don't want that to happen. Y'all, y'all, y'all keep coming through that door. Cause I'm gonna call pastor. I'm gonna call him from Africa. I'm gonna call him from London. I'm gonna say, what the crowd look like? Better be somebody back there in that overflow if y'all gotta switch and go back there and sit. So when he turn around, a group of y'all go back there and sit, and when he come and sit back on the front row, you come back to your regular seat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 
Ephesians 3 and 10, because I'm telling you, I got so much to teach, and I, and, I, and I know I'm not going to be finished with this in a couple of weeks, so I'm really trying to, I'm, I, I really want to finish this. I, I, as Bishop Ellis says in, uh, in, in the Bahamas, he, he gave us that word about two years ago. He said, whatever you do, whatever you start, finish strong. Finish strong, and I want to finish strong. I don't want to finish weak. I want, you, I want you to have the whole package of what God is trying to say. In the book of Ephesians 3 and 10, it says this. I want to start with this scripture. The purpose is, uh, well, you know what? Uh, I want to start with the eighth verse because it, it, it makes a little bit more sense. Three and eight. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Somebody say God's consecrated people. Because that's the people he's talking to. And I want you to get, I want you to get the I want you to get this little comparison here. That God's consecrated people in the side, in the eyesight of the earthly realm of the church will always be looked upon as the least. As you know, gifts and talents is always perceived in the church as the greatest. Consecrated ones. It says, to, to me, though I am the very least of all the saints, God's consecrated people. This grace, favor, privilege was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, boundless, phantomless, incalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ. Wealth which no man, no human, no human being could have searched out. Now I want you to understand what you're functioning with. You're functioning with a favor and a grace that has been granted to you. You already have it. It's been granted unto you. What kind of favor? What kind of grace? It is the kind of favor and the kind of grace that have been entrusted to the Gentiles. That means the ones that are adopted into the royal family. The ones that have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. It is the unendless and boundless. There's no boundaries to what God can do for you. It is phantomless. You can't imagine it. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. It is incalculable. You can't count it. I mean, if you started right now trying to count all of what God did for you, you couldn't count it. And the reason why you couldn't count it, because there's some stuff he done already done for you that you don't even know he done did. <laughs> Woo! I feel something in here today. And this is the one I like. It is exhaustless. It doesn't get tired of blessing you. <laughs> it don't wear out. <laughs> now this this is what the word considers as the true riches this is what the word declares as the wealth that could not be searched out by a human being no human being could have found this for you no human being could have come to this conclusion for you this is a God given thing on your life Jesus now so you have to let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, just, let me just help you with this let me tell you something about the word of God. Let me tell you something about the word of God. The word of God, the word of God is like this. You know, you read scriptures and people say, you know, I read the word of God. But when the Lord calls you to a certain gathering like he, like he does now, and then he puts certain scriptures in my spirit to read in here, for this time and this season in your life, it becomes your prophecy. think you got that it that scripture becomes your wait a minute devil you know you know you know how you go through a lot of stuff and and, and, and then God brings you into a building like this and read a scripture like this this scripture becomes your wait a minute devil that means okay Satan out of all the stuff that you're doing you just a line wonder because now I know that what the Lord really has in store for me is incalculable Oh, I don't think y'all hear that. <laughs> Let me just make this statement. Everything is done in the spirit. Everything is done in the spirit before you ever see it in the natural. 
And so, and so, and so I don't care what the state of, I don't care what the state of your life is right now. When you read this scripture right here, you're supposed to begin to praise God because that means the Lord is declaring something in the spirit realm that has already taken place when you Your present state does not determine your outcome. This scripture determines my outcome. Watch this. Now this is the part I like. Also, also to enlighten all men and make plain to them what is the plan regarding the Gentiles and providing for the salvation of all men. Of the mystery kept hidden through the ages and concealed until now in the mind of God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Whew. I cannot get stuck here today because I got too much stuff I got to do. And y'all, I be done got right here and not been able to go on. The mystery kept hidden through the ages and concealed until now. Why am I coming to prayer? What? Okay, okay. Out of all the years that you've been saved, why now the Lord calls this prayer to Kansas City? I'll tell you why. Because the mysteries of God that was once concealed, you don't hear me, he's ready to reveal it now. And those mysteries is in the mind of God. And if somebody is willing to seek the mind of God, then the mysteries will be revealed to you. What kind of mysteries am I talking about? What kind of mystery? I'm talking about the mysteries of God getting stuff done and you don't know how. God is waiting on somebody to be able to say, how did you get that? I don't know. How did that happen? I don't know. How did you get delivered? I don't know. You know what? It's a mystery. We always want to know a plan. God's looking for somebody that don't want to know the plan, but want to tap the mystery. I don't know how I'm wealthy today. I don't know how he paid my debt. I don't know how my body got healed. Well, how did you get it? I sought the mind of God. I sought the mind of God at a time with the mystery of God. It's a timing, y'all. Can I make that clear? It's a timing. What do I mean by that? You can't receive it until it's being released. God, I'm gonna say that one more time. You can't get it unless it's being released. You can seek out the something all day, all night. You can't receive it unless it's being released. But guess what happened if you put yourself in the position at the right time and the right season when it's being released, then you can receive it. And I believe on this prayer, the mystery of God and the power of God and the authority of God is now being released. Now receive it. Okay, then it says here, it says here, then why are these mysteries being released? 
Why are we, why are we, why are we in the, in the entering into the manifold, the manifold, the manifold mysteries of God? Because the 10th verse says this, the purpose is that through the church, Through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities and principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. Now, let me just, let me just, let me just break that down to you. All right, give me your strength today. That the the multifaceted variety, manifold wisdoms of the church, of the body of Christ. Okay, let me just paint it to you with the body of Christ. Like my body is standing up here and I have I have a head. And on my and this is this is my head, but this is from my from my from my neck down is my body. And so when the Bible tells us that, and the governments shall be upon his shoulders. Y'all play too much. because Do y'all read y'all Bible? That the government shall be upon his shoulders. Now if this same Christ live in us, then that means we have been given the power to rule governments. It is on our shoulders. We control it. And so, and so, and so what happens is the manifold, the manifold mysteries of the church, of the body of Christ must now in this age be revealed to the principalities who in time past have had they say so in the earth realm illegally because Satan is the power and the prince of the air, not the earth. Because the Bible said, Lord, I've given you authority. The Bible said, the angel said, who is man that thou art mindful of him? I've given him authority over the earth and I've put all things under his feet. Which means anytime Satan touched down in the earth realm, he's illegal. Which we automatically have the power to put him back in the second heaven. He rules the... He doesn't rule the earth realm. Okay, you can, you can keep taking that if you want to. Well, the devil did this and the devil did that. And the devil, it's like, why are you here? Why are you here? What are you doing? You don't have any authority here. And if you make the decision, okay, I'm just saying something right here. If the devil makes the decision to remain in the earth realm, then there's only one position for him, Andre. If he touches down, he has to come under my feet. Okay. I wish somebody in here wanted the authority that God gave you. He don't walk around hand in hand with you. He does not stand equal to you. He's not allowed to be in your face. Okay, are you getting this? Because then, 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 then you don't talk to the enemy. He's not here. He's here. You don't pray at him here. You pray at him here. When you pray up, you pray up to the third realm. You pray up to where God is. You don't have to deal in the second realm where the principalities are because they are in body spirits, which means they can do you no harm unless they got a body. I'm not hearing nobody say, Satan is a disembodied spirit. He is not allowed to operate and show manifestation.
limitations without a body. That's why he seeks to use you. That's why he runs up and down the earth seeking whom he may devour. Devour how? By making your body his temple. See, he has to play by the rules. Okay. It's like a football game. Let me just explain to you. It's like a football game. Okay, you come into the game to play football. You don't come in with your own rules. Everybody got to play by the rules. And then they find you cheating, you get fined. There's certain spots you can't tackle a person in. Because then that says you're not out to play the game, you're out to injure somebody. So there are rules to this battle that he cannot forfeit. Number one, a temple must be involved. Y'all, come on. See, the battle is this. The battle is this. If Satan is born, he's warned after the same thing that God is after. He wants the temple. The reason why, let me help you with something. The reason why, the reason why he absolutely hates God. (laughs) Jesus, I love you. I love you. The reason why he absolutely hates God is because, is because, is because what, 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 what makes God the supernatural spirit. Satan is not a supernatural spirit. What makes God a supernatural spirit is that he was able to use his mouth to create stuff without a body. So he made trees, he made the air, he made it all. Satan ain't made nothing. He can't make nothing. You don't hear me. Creativity is not in him. Whatever he uses, oh y'all, wherever he shows up, he needed a person to do that. And anything that he does against you, and he did not use a person, he got to take his hands off. You ought to a temple he needs a temple so so then the bible says that that that, 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 that we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is our reason sir so our bodies become the temple of the holy spirit so then the lord can use you to do the impossible in the earth realm because you're yielding to him your body. And so you become, you become the tabernacle in the wilderness. They picked it up. They took it where it was supposed to go. Y'all, come on. The fire never went out. They would scoop the fire up off the altar. And they would transport the fire. Because once God lit the fire, they couldn't undo the fire. Because it was divinely lit by God. And so every time they set the temple down, they put the fires back on the altar. And then the glory of God will show back up. It was a moving temple. So that was the Lord of the Old Testament showing us how he wanted to move in the earth realm. I want to move my fire through a temple. And so as long as I can move through a temple, then I can declare that wherever you go, that's my church. You go to work, that's my church. You go to the hospital to work, that's my church. You drive a garbage truck, my God, my church is on a garbage truck. My church is in the grocery store. My church went from the post office. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Church. Y'all don't hear what God is saying. So when you leave this prayer and you go back home, the minute you walk in your door, the church of the living God just stepped in your house. Which means anytime God want to manifest himself, as long as he has a temple, he can do it. 
And so then what Satan says is, I need me a temple. Because this temple thing is kind of getting out of hand. And everywhere I look, everybody is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So then he started doing all kind of stupid stuff. And, 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 and I'm gonna tell you, when he don't, you can always tell when he ain't got no temple. Cause, Cause that's when you start seeing stuff fall off the shelf and, and, and you start hearing sounds in the house and doors slamming that shouldn't slam. And... Because let me tell you something, when he doesn't have a temple, then he only have one other recourse. Oh, he hates me for this. I want you to know he hates me for this. He only has one other recourse and that's fear. So he'll let manifestations of stuff show up in your life that he already know can't stay. But it's to put you in fear. Because the minute you jump in fear and you jump out of faith, then God step out and Satan step in. You don't hear me, you don't hear me. That's why you gotta spit the word back at him. When you see stuff show up in your body and the devil trying to say, oh, you got cancer. Wait a minute, no weapon formed against me. Shut prosper, for my God has not given me the spirit of but the spirit of love and a sound mind. Can I get somebody to pray? You gotta bring down fear. gonna happen no this is fear because fear cancels my faith the minute I get in fear I hold this water the minute I get in fear I am going through the process now of exchanging my faith for fear The minute you get afraid about anything. The minute you get shaken about anything. See, you gotta become resilient. I just wish I had some, I just wish I had some football players in the spirit. You, got, you gotta become resilient. You gotta turn around and tell the devil, well then cut my lights off, but I don't care. I'll, I'll sit in the dark and what, whatever. <laughs> oh, what you gonna do? They gonna set you outside, but I'm gonna sit outside on top of my furniture and read my Bible. Do not go put me in fear. Cause see, you gotta understand the tactic that the devil used to put you in fear is not what he's after. He's after your total victory. He's after what God is about to do to you up the road and around the corner. So he'll use your light bill and your gas bill and your rent and your marriage and your kids to put you in fear. your light bill. He wants your faith. Sit down, let me just, let me just. Some, somebody getting this? So you gotta understand the delusion. You gotta understand the props that he built. Now see, he don't bring stuff that don't, that don't frighten you. He, 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 he already knows your worst fear. Oh, what you gonna do? Oh, what's gonna happen? Oh, Lord have mercy. You know, it's your worst fear. Oh, what if he cheating? Well, go and cheat, cause I'm gonna go on with my life. Cause the devil ain't getting my faith. Well, what if we divorce? Well, all right then. Oh, come on somebody. How long are you gonna let the devil torment you about stuff? 
But when did you lose your job? When did I lose it? Because my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. You gotta shut him down. Shut down the dumb stuff. Shut down the torment. You gotta bind his torment. She knows the way that I take. And anything that God allows Satan to do, he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me. Okay, sit down, because I got, I got, I got, I got. The trying, the trying, the trying, the trying of my faith, the trying of my faith. Okay. Let me help you with this. Because the trying of your faith. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. The trying of your faith could be. Somebody said, but me and the devil is trying my faith. And just to see if I'm going to. The trying of your faith could be the failure of something. The trying of your faith could be, and I'm just believing God. I'm trusting Him. Believing Him. God, you're going to make a way for my phone bill. And then the phone get turned off. That's the trying of your faith. Because then do you get ticked off at God? Or do you say my faith still stands firm in who God is? And my faith is not linked to a phone bill. My faith is linked to who I believe God to eternally be. He's trying to get you now. He's trying to get you to exchange your faith to take on some fear. Because he know you can't cast him out if you're afraid. Give me up, y'all, with something. Give me up, y'all. People that play football can't get on the football field trying to run with the ball and scared to be tackled. You just be, oh, 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 oh. You know, have you seen, have you seen, have you seen movies like The Water Boy where he running with the ball and all of a sudden he just dropped the ball like, if that's what you want. <laughs> now I'm the quarterback. I'm trying to throw you a pass. And you talk about, over here, God, I want, oh, I want your glory. You don't hear me. You don't hear. And do you not know that while you want his glory, there's another team that wants that same ball? Just as many people as you got running with you and trying to protect you in prayer, you got just that many people running to attack you. And sometimes, sometimes you're going to catch it and you're going to get the ball and you're going to run a few feet and they're going to tackle you. And every now and then in, in the spirit. You're going to get that Emma Smith touch. Where you catch it, stop, roll, turn. The enemy going to think he got you. You're going to be able to roll out of it and double back and head the other way. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible said that there is no temptation such as common to me.
Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Go to Psalms 846. Y'all about to get this. These are, these, these are things you need to know. Eight, four, and six. Let me just. Okay. Now, principle number two. Eight, four, and six says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of earth born man that you care for him yet you have made him but a little lower than God or heavenly beings? And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under. You have put all. So then how do I take, how do I take my dominion? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a mind transition. You know, it's like when you've been living a certain way all your life. And then all of a sudden, somebody tell you, well, that ain't the way you live it. That's the way you live it. Now, how do I, how do, how do I make this transition to, to, oh, Lord, help me? To say it and get under my feet. How do, how do I? Because we have been trained in Christendom to constantly be codependent. You know, help me, Lord, is our vocabulary. Help me, Lord. You help me, Lord. Help me. I need your strength, Jesus. I need, you, you know, we, we have really been messed up. Help me, Lord. I need your strength, God. Give me your strength. No, the joy of the Lord is your strength. What you praying for strength for? Oh, hear me, Lord. No, 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 no. I put it under your feet. Oh, Lord, just make the devil. No, I ain't going to make the devil do nothing. I made an open show of him. I took the keys from him. Now, now, what else do you want me to do? You got to come and be a part of this little transition, too. You know, it's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just like your mother, your mother getting you dressed, and you, here, here, here you are all your life, tie my shoe, wipe my nose, change my diaper. Here you are seven years old, she's talking about, I came, out, I came out the bathroom, I was in the mall the other day, and I came out the bathroom, and this, and this, this little girl standing about this, and her and the mama and the little sister was going to the bathroom and I thought they was going and I come out the bathroom and the little girl laid up on the table and the mama can't hardly hold her legs up. I said, now I know you ain't changing no diaper. I don't know big old somebody like that. <laughs> have you ever seen kids like four, and four years old still with a pacifier? I have. And it's, like, and it's like the Lord said, I done died on a cross for you. I done took stripes for you. I've been pierced in my side for you. I got crown of thorns on my head. I even went to hell for you. I got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. I done gave you the victory. And now can you please just use it? I can't do it all. My work is finished. Okay, y'all don't get that. Y'all don't get Y'all just think that's an Easter cliche. It is finished. <laughs> some some of y'all don't know. <laughs> some of y'all don't know what my little um, my little demonstrations is, but. I belonged to a church for about 17 years and they did, a, they did the Easter cantata every year. And Prophet Jones up there, stand up Prophet Jones, he played Jesus. And so they would walk, Jesus, Jesus would walk with the cross and, and we hired professional makeup artists and they would have his back looking like it's plowed open. They put Jesus up on the cross and they, they had this man that tapered and they had the thunder and the lightning. 
And it was the hit. And every night, I don't care how long the cantata stayed, every night when they got to hit, it's finished. Everybody was in thunder. Everybody would go, oh. And so when you hear me do this, that's the crowd shout. That's a play for us. That's a familiar scripture. He wasn't playing when he said that. It's finished. His work is finished. Now this is where yours began. He don't do anything else for you. You now do everything in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Through Christ, which strengthened me, not Christ do it for me. And let me show you. Let me let me, let me get one thing straight for you. <laughs> you know we ain't in the old church when people say, you know, you come to church and you go on this. Honey, they ain't thought about you no more. Can I help y'all? The saints ain't praying for y'all like y'all think they are. Okay, you're, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting nobody to say that. I can't get nobody. See, the old mothers in the church, you said, pray for me, mother. And they be all in their kitchen while they cooking. Ha, shot. God, do it for one eating body. Ha, ha, ha. And they come back to church the next night and say, baby, I was praying for you. And this is what the Lord told you. You tell people not pray for me. People say, all right. But when they leave out that door, they got their own issues. They ain't thought about you. This is how they pray for you. Bless the Lord, whatever she going through. Touch her right now. <laughs> Give us strength to go through, God. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, 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 wish, I wish I had one witness. They on their way to their car with their kids. And they get in their car, they say, bless Sister Emma Lord. She really going going through, and not even 30 seconds after they end the car, they done start the car. Jimmy and Johnny back here arguing over something, and, and if you a ghetto mama, you reach in the back, what, what, I'm gonna knock your head off. Stop it. And if you a professional like my mother, you would carry a brush and something, she used to carry a wooden spoon, and she used to drive the car and reach in the back and just beat while she drive. And if she hit the seat, that's too long that she says, scoot over here so I can get you. Praying for you, and then you pull up at your house. Y'all ain't saying, and your husband acting up, and they done turned your lights off. Do you think I'm praying for you? No, I'm not. That's why we gotta get into a place in God where we pray for ourselves. We prophesy to ourselves. We buy the devil for ourselves. We cast him down for ourselves. I'm not gonna wait for nobody to cast this devil down. over everything that he has made. People really don't believe it. Over everything he has made. Which means, now this is going to be too deep for you right here. I rule it. I tell it what to do. I tell it what it can't do. I'm going to tell you who understood that. 
I'm going to tell you who understood that. That, 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 that. that I have a dominion over every living thing that God has made. See, that's why you don't understand why the Lord is saying, you know, come to pray. Put this discipline in your life. Put that down. Don't touch that. Clean that up. Wash that up. Because, 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 before you, before you tap into dominion power, the principles of the way you live must now become conducive to the channeling of the power. Okay, let me just, listen, 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 listen to this. This is, this is, this is, this is, you cannot tap the dominion power in the nature and the, and the, and the, and the posture that you formerly lived in. Something has to change. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. Daniel would not eat the meat from the king's table. His diet was different. His prayer life was different. He, he refused to bow to any demonic force. And so, and, so, and so his diet was different than anybody else's in that region. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their diet was different. They said, I tell you what, Y'all eat the way y'all want to eat. Just give us this method. And I guarantee you that when we get through, we'll be much more healthier than you. We will look better. Than, okay. Because see, we want, we, want, we want supernatural results with satanic means. We don't want to change the principle to get into the realm of the supernatural. We want, we, we want, we want to be able to tap the power without changing anything over here. When this power requires a diet change, a mind change, a physical change, a mental change, an emotional change, a spiritual change, a prayer change, a fasting change. I'm not getting to church right there. Something has to change. Now, this is all depends on how, how, how far you wanna go. Now, you, you can, you can, there's different levels in God. Okay, let me just help you with this. So Daniel changed his diet. He changed himself. And so the, the elements and the principles of the earth says, this is a lion who ain't eight in months. He is starving. He is mad. He is ravishing. And he needs to be fed. Here is a king that has the authority to bring him down. So he changes his diet, changes his company, changes his prayer, stands in faith when everybody is operating in one religion. He alone says, but I will not bow to the earth realm. The king takes him and throws him in the lion's den. And what happens? He puts what God has made under his feet. When his presence hit the pit, it transformed the lion's appetite and subdued him. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. He dropped another power on something that was supposed to eat him up. You don't hear what I'm saying. and you will subdue it. He, he, I didn't get a chance to really, really, really minister this the way I wanted to at a mega fest. He superimposed. The word superimposed means to take something and lay it on top of something that already exists, therefore, crushing, overwhelming, and annihilating the power that be. Okay, so we don't, we don't deny that Satan is working. 
<laughs> but what we do, okay, let me just put it this way. When you go to the courtroom and there's a case at stake and there's two lawyers arguing and one get up and say, well, he's badgering the witness. Why like, don't you think? And then another lawyer said, object. And then the judge said, overrule. temporary insanity. You know, you freak out for a minute. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Oh, I can't take no more. And all of a sudden, you shake yourself like a dog. Wait a minute. And you start hollering, ah! Are you shouting hallelujah? Are you shouting glory to God? 
while you shout, Lord, I praise you. Then you got to plump yourself and get yourself ready. And in the midst of your praise, you start saying, God, I praise you. And then you say, in the name of Jesus. Because you letting the devil know, I ain't coming by myself. Because I'm getting ready to bring you down. And I want you to know whose name I'm coming in. I'm just not a Christian that's in some praise antic. I'm not just one of these born again believers that's just jumping around. The minute you say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bless your name. I come in the name. The devil knows he in trouble. He knows that his weapons are about to be destroyed. He knows his kingdom is about to come down. But you got to attack him the right way. Watch this. Watch this. Because the Bible says, what have I said? In Matthew 18, that whatsoever you bind. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Now watch this. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Now let me just, let me just say, binding and loose can go together. Don't never bind and then don't loose, okay? I want you to do me a favor. Put your tongue on top of your mouth and hold it in position and then try to talk. Don't do that. I just start saying thank you, Jesus. Try, try to say thank you, Jesus. Put your tongue in the roof of your mouth. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> say, say glory to God, Lord, I thank you. Glory to God, who I have. Now, I'm a human being. We speak English. You put your tongue in the roof of your mouth, and you just walk up to me and say, Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. I want you to get up and I want you to start walking over there. Now I'm going to say something to you. I'm ready. I'm ready here. 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 Now you know what I'm saying? I'm saying Andre, come back here. He kept walking because my language wasn't clear. And that's why the devil keep doing what he's doing. Because your tongue is stuck to the roof of your mouth. And what you all this emotion ain't stopping him. Your shouting don't stop him. It's only when you make your language clear to him that you will halt him in his tracks. Because if you don't make your language clear to the devil, you just a Christian having a fit. He's going to get tired in a minute. And the devil just laughs. You don't make it clear. So, bind and loosen. Why did I do this? Like teeth and tongue. You can't talk without your teeth. You can't talk. You think you can't talk without your teeth? Have you ever seen somebody missing teeth? Turn the Lord that been good to me. Every day I wake up, I just praise his name, I just praise him. The lady live in my neighbor like this. And you can't fake it, because you know, you can always tell people that's missing teeth. It's the way they lips look. They ain't got to open their mouth. You can just walk up to him and say, how you doing? Look right at their lips and you can tell he ain't, she ain't got no teeth. <laughs> and when them top ones is gone, the top lips sit down in the bottom lip. <laughs> and when the bottom teeth is gone, you have a, over, a lip overlap. Teeth and 
tongue. Because their teeth wasn't important to conversation. They wouldn't have doctors making you false ones. Y'all ain't saying them. Y'all don't want me to teach. Y'all play too much because y'all want to act like that, don't it? People make false teeth. And they make you false ones because they know that it is difficult for you to talk with good. And when you don't take care of your teeth, you have to buy something and pay for something that was rightfully yours. When you don't maintain your prayer life and you don't maintain your consecration, then you have to pay for something that was supposed to be rightfully yours. Now you gotta go get in prayer lines, in prayer partners. So binding and loosing go together like teeth and tongue. You don't bind unless you lose. You don't say Satan, not bind you, and then don't lose. Okay. Because what do I bind? I bind, write this down, write this down. Because they be telling me now, what she say? Do you, do you lose it or do you bind? Because you know we can get it twisted, and the devil lets you get it twisted when you don't write it down. You always bind him first. And what am I binding? I'm binding Satan's activity. I bind him. When I say Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Stand up, my sister. When I say Satan, let's go back to your chair. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I sit him down. You don't hear me. At the name of Jesus. Every knee. Not tomorrow. That present second has to bow. He loses his knees. Satan, I bind you. Satan, I bind you. Satan, I bind you. Satan, I bind you. Nothing happens. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. So then why do I lose? Because I hear people say this. And I lose the glory of God. And I look, mm -mm. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And what do I lose? When I bind him, now I must loose all effects of what he brought. I must, I must loose every demonic force from their assignment. Okay, you don't hear me. Let me just say. Okay, do you remember, you remember when Jesus, remember when Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Okay, he bound death, but then he still had the grave clothes on. So then he had to loose him from the effects that was left by that demonic activity. You don't hear me. So when, so when, so when the enemy attacks your body, you say, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I loose the pain. I loose all of the demonic activity that came along with this attack. You don't hear me. If you bind him in the name of Jesus and then you loose him, you free yourself from the effect that you felt behind it. Because sometimes the enemy can attack you in such a way that it leaves you spinning and it leaves your, you, you hurt and wounded in your spirit. So you got to bind him up and then you got to loose every activity. I loose the spirit of depression. 
I loose the spirit of oppression. I loose the spirit of poverty. Satan, I bind you. I bind your every work and I loose you from your assignment. Every small demonic force that came in coherence with you, every demon that you brought with you to attack my family, I loose you from your assignment. So then three activities must take place. You bind him. You loose the activity. Remember when the woman came to Jesus and she had the issue of blood? She was bound over. Not only did he bind the activity of Satan, but when he said, woman, thou art loosed, that means you're you're free from the effect that this issue of blood had. In other words, in the spirit realm, you've bound the activity. Now, what must has, has to happen is there must be a showing and a manifestation that you are free. And the only way that takes place, you have to loose the enemy from all the activity so the manifestation of your freedom can be seen. Okay. Do you remember the man that had the legions of demons in him and he raged and raged and raged and, 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 when, and when the disciples came, the Bible said, and the man was sitting clothed in his right mind because not only was the demons cast out, but the activity of him being crazy was loose. What am I saying? So many of you in this building have been freed from different things and that's why you see people that's been freed from prostitution but they still look like a prostitute you got people that's been freed from crack but they still got that funny look because you've been free but you haven't been loosed from the demonic activity that that thing left on your life I'm preaching right there I just said something right there I just said something right there. Do you know how, 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 how you know that the Holy Ghost has given you the victory over certain things, but, but, but it seems like, it seems like people can't forget because you haven't loosed the assignment off of your life. When God delivers you, there shouldn't be any sign. The only way somebody can tell what you've been into, you got to tell your testimony. And what that says to me is that the enemy has been bound, but his activity have not been loosed. You don't hear what I'm saying. Poverty has been bound up, but the activity of what poverty have left have not been loose and that's why if you don't loose it then you can't get new furniture you can't get a new car you don't hear me poverty is bound but you cannot see the effect unless you loose the demonic activity that it has left am I helping anybody am I helping you She says, say it again. You got to be, you got to lose yourself. This is not an isolated attack. Can I, can I, do y'all have time for me to say this? It ain't no one devil that attacks you. There is a demon that binds you. And then there are demonic forces that hold you. And so then people can't get free in their mind because, because they know they've been delivered, but they're tormented all the time. Just, you know you ain't this, and you ain't that, and you ain't that. And you know how many people you done slept with, and you know what your past is, and I don't know why you in here praising God. You know why? Because the enemy was bound the minute you gave your life to Christ, but nobody taught you how to loose the demonic activity off of your life and tell the devil that you're on sacred grounds and I forbid you to cross this line. And the reason why he cannot cross this line because nobody told you that after you bind the enemy and then you loose him from the activity, you apply the blood of Jesus because then he cannot come back because the Bible said that when the enemy is cast out, he comes back and if the temple is not filled, he brings demons back rush <laughs> mother who am I binding I'm binding 
finding the strong man. He says, if you want to get the whole house, you bind the strong man. Okay, y'all are hearing me. There's a strong man in every last one of our lives. And so when you bind the strong man and you shut him down, then other demonic forces have no strength to draw on. Because they all draw from the mothership. They all take their assignment from him. And so, and so, can, can, I, can, I, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I use this as an example? If your strong man is the spirit of lust and you bind that, then you lose all sexual perversion. You lose... You lose anything that, that, is, that is sexually perverted out of the will of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when that spirit come back to tempt you, there's nothing that responds to it. Because not only is the demonic force bound, but you've been loosed by the activity. Which means I cancel out of my flesh realm every memory that I had to the way that used to make me feel. And now, instead of it turning me on, it turns me on. You better shout right there. Because I just preached something right there. You just got free right there. Woo. Sit down for a minute. I got to. Ain't you tempted? No, I don't feel it. Don't that turn you on? No, it don't turn me on. Why? Because I loose the effects. I cancel the effects in my flesh. I presented my body as a living sacrifice. And I bind up the strong man. And I loose his effect. Now, what used to take me out of God, it takes me in the praise. What used to take me out of the spirit, now takes me to another level. Because I know that when the enemy comes to attack, it is my sign that I am free, that I have been set free. Sit down, let me make this plain. Don't you? The enemy is still in you. He uses you. But if the enemy comes against you, if temptation comes against you, that is your sign that he no longer abides within. Y'all don't hear me. When you being tempted by the enemy, you ought to praise him. Because that says to you that he's coming back. Back, back. He's no longer there and he's trying to get his place back. He's he's trying to gain his place back. It, it, do I have a witness in here? Let me see if I got. Is there anybody here that can look at themselves and see where the Lord brought you from? I wish I had a praise church in here today. Is there anybody in here that can look back over your life and see where the Lord has brought you from? Sit down for a minute. open the door put it in here you can't open the door you can't open the door because you know what what looks like one temptation it ain't a temptation let me show you what it is come here baby come here come here come here come here come here 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Come here. Come here. Get in line. Line up this way behind me. Follow me. This is why he tempts. This is why he comes to people that have been delivered. Because he knows this. That if you open the door to temptation, this right here I look like is just another sexual experience. But what he's going to do is when you open the door, all seven. Now, watch this. I want you to see this. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven plus the original temptation, which makes eight. The number eight is new beginnings, which means the devil is about to put you in something that you ain't never experienced before. He's about to take you to another place in demonic activity. That's why you gotta shut the door. That's why you gotta bind him. That's why you gotta loose his activity. That's why you gotta refuse to let him in back into your life. Listen. Y'all think I'm playing. Because see, the Lord delivered you. You bind him up. You lose the enemy from all his activities. And then the house is swept clean. And then where you used to be just the pr promiscuous with, with Johnny and George. And then the stuff that you thought you would never do. Then all of a sudden, you're sleeping with two and three people. You have an orgies. You, you, Y'all ain't saying that. You're sleeping with men and women and cats and dogs because people do do that. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Now you're in the pornography and you can't come out. Now you're stuck on the internet pornography and you can't turn it off. Who am I preaching to right now? Because one little sin and one little temptation don't stop there. It's seven more enter in. And the Bible said, and the state of that person becomes worse off than they were in the beginning. So you must bind him. You must loose his activity because if you don't loose, if you bind him, if Jesus just called Lazarus forth and did not loose him from his grave clothes, Then the effect, listen, 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 listen. See, Jesus said that the prince of this world cometh and he finds none of him in me. Why? Why? Because wherever there is an attraction, there is a spiritual association. Let me just put it this way. When you think about fish, if you're not absolutely retarded, you can't think about a fish without thinking about water. I did that before because, you know, in my, little, in my little young, cruel days, I asked my mother to buy me some goldfish, and I was like about six or seven years old. And I used to take them out of the water and just watch them just pan on the table. <laughs> and I would just sit there and wait until they get just not moving. <laughs> and the last thing that move on the goldfish is my... <laughs> And then it slowly get 
Then I pick it up by his tail and put it in the water. I used to do that over and over and over again. Put my hand in, scoop them up, and I close my hand on it and feel it going all in my hands. And I put my hand on You know, I really believe if God hadn't killed me, saved me, I probably could have been a serial killer because that's how stuff like that started when you don't have no mercy. And I was like going, ooh, you dying. I mean, that was a three. I was getting a thrill out of that. And there was something in me that made me feel powerful for them to need me. It's like, you want some water, don't you? Because if I don't give you none, you going to die on this table. My sister would come in there, Ma, Nina got the goldfish out on the table. She said, I see you doing that one more time. I'm going to take them goldfish from you. I go, yes, ma'am. So I stopped doing that, and then I start. She said, you feed the goldfish? I go days without feeding them, and then I pour a whole lot of food in there. <laughs> and then one day, I just really got sick and tired of it. So every day I just poured a lot of food and your goldfish keep eating, keep eating. And then a couple of days later I came and they was. <laughs> and I went to the toilet with a smile like, they're gone. <laughs> just like a little demon child. They're gone. I know some of y'all saying, you have some psychological problems. Your mama should have got you some help. <laughs> Why am I saying that? Because that's what, that's what an attraction is. To left residue that have not been loosed. Because the minute the enemy find any kind of association, then he feels like that's where I belong. So then though, the, watch this, though you have bounded and certain spirits have been bound off of your life, that spirit of that thing, I'm preaching right now. Like if you got a gambling problem and God deliver you from gambling, everywhere you turn, somebody be trying, I thought about you, I bought you a lotto ticket. It's like, you'd be like, why did they... Here come your friend. Come on, go to bingo with me. Why, why does all this keep... Everywhere you look, the sign, 20 million. 171 million. You start dreaming numbers and, and, and pass a quote of scripture. You say, that hit, I think that's a number. Seven and two, six. I'm going to play that in the box. You be sitting all in church. You know why you're tormented? Because it was bound but there was no loosing of the demonic activity. So then certain spirits follow you all the time. See, if you like light-skinned men with curly hair, the devil ain't gonna bring you no dark-skinned man with, with, with buck teeth from Africa. Everywhere you turn, a light-skinned man with curly hair gonna be saying, how you doing? You sure look sexy. You know why? Because that haven't been loosed off of you. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I know what I'm talking about. He ain't gonna send you nobody you don't like. Everywhere you go in the grocery store, in the laundromat, some light-skinned man with curly hair, and it's gonna be like an epidemic. You can't get away from it. Everywhere you turn, how you do? You said, what in the world is this? You like women with big legs and big chests? Oh, it's gonna be all around. It that devil will give you a promotion on your job. And the girl that sit right next to you, every day you got to look at her and say, Satan, 
I bind you right now. Come on out of here, devil. Because when the effect haven't been loose, it's gravity like a magnet. You don't know why you're being tempted like that. You're being tempted because the enemy knows I've been bound, which means she ain't doing that no more. But they didn't lose me. And because they didn't lose me, I'm going to keep on bringing people around them to tempt them because all I'm waiting is a weak moment because they're going to get weak after a while. <laughs> Juanita Vine, I'm going to Africa. They're going to get a little weak. And I'm going to be right here with my seven. Close today. I'll finish this when I get back. Prophet Jones is going to be really, this was really prophetic the way this God set this up because um, I'm teaching on the demonic activity. I'm teaching on the binding the loosing. One more quick thing and I'll finish this up when I come back. Is when you bind the enemy in the name of Jesus, you loose his activity. You must release the kingdom of God to come. Because the kingdom of God is, so you bind, you loose, you release. B-L-R. You bind, you loose, you release. You bind, you loose, you release. Because remember, when the enemy comes back and the temple is swept and clean and ain't no Holy Spirit living in it, he coming back to his house. But when he come back, he got to know, you don't live here no more. Somebody else moved in. So you release the kingdom and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is love, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost, which means that's why in the beginning stages of prayer in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, it says thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Because what you're doing is when you say to the Lord, now I release your kingdom, then what you are decreeing and declaring over your life and your family is that now the will of the Lord for the original plan that God has is getting ready to go into operation. And it will not be stopped. You know why? I bound the enemy. It cannot be hindered. You know why? I've loosed the demonic activities. Why am I getting ready to prosper in Christ Jesus? Because now the kingdom of God reigns over me and my family. <laughs> so you have just shut every door the enemy comes say that I bind you his effects I loose you now I release the kingdom of God the original plan of God to rest rule and abide over my life I release the kingdom of God to have free course in my life I place the blood of Jesus on the top of my head down to the sole of my feet. Therefore, defying the works of the enemy, he cannot cross over the bloodline. He cannot trans send the blood. Did I help somebody today? That's how you pray over your family. You see somebody going through some demonic action. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I bind every work right now. I bind this spirit of lust right now. And I loose every demonic activity. And I release the kingdom of God to come down on them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. God, I release your original plan in the name of Jesus. And I decree it to be so. Which means the minute you pray like that, the devil got to shut down. He got to sit down. He got to come under your feet. He got to take all oh, y'all. He got to take his hands off. God helped me to release this today because Prophet Jones, don't let his looks and his age fool you. Prophet Jones is going to be ministering on the moving of the spirit about two years or so ago God gave him this revelation about the Holy Spirit and I was he was ministering at the church 
at my former church. I've been a member there for 17 years. And he was ministering this word. It was about three years ago. And um, I was sitting in the back of the church. I had come in from off of the road. And I heard he was preaching. So instead of going home from the airport, I just had my driver to take me by the church. I walk in the back of the church and he was preaching. And the Lord had given him this revelation on the Holy Spirit. And the operation of the Holy Spirit. And the moving of the Holy Spirit. And the following of the Holy Spirit and how do you know when you're moving and following the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Lord fell in the place and he said I want everybody in here that want a refreshing of God's spirit to lift your hands up he has a very unusual anointing and I lift my hands up and the power of God knocked me out in the back of the church I was rebaptized all over again in the Holy Spirit I had never experienced anybody teaching on the Holy Spirit and to be such a young man but he's a praying man he's a fasting man he's a man that shuts up in the church he's a man that constantly on long fast God prophesied that the Lord would use him at an early age but when I tell you that the anointing of God is on his life in a tremendous way in an awesome way and I said to him I said this word is a universal word. And so now that I'm ministering on the demonic activity and I'm ministering on the breaking of satanic powers, now you need to understand because sometimes we think we know what the Holy Spirit requires. How do we move in the spirit of God? I've been teaching you how to move against the spirit of the enemy. But now how do you move in the spirit of God? How do you? Because it becomes the balance.